household cleaners. They can get pretty expensive. Uh, specifically heavy duty stuff. Stuff for like uh, cleaning drains or degreasing your oven. Um, getting really nasty stains out of stuff. There's one that's been around forever. Like colonial times even. Uh, it's called lye. It's a very simple chemical. You can get it from a literal waste product which is right up my alley. I love it when you can take something that would normally go into the trash and turn it into something useful. So today, I'm going to clean out my wood stove and I'm going to show you how to turn the ashes into lye. Good old potassium hydroxide. Little uh, hillbilly chemistry for you. The second thing you're going to need is a plastic five gallon bucket. You don't want to be using anything that can react with the lye. Now, you're safe with most of your irony metals. I mean, they'll react a little bit, but the reaction is just going to be in the form of corrosion if you leave it on there too long. What you absolutely don't want to do is... Uh, you don't want this stuff getting anywhere near aluminum. Otherwise, you'll wind up with an exothermic reaction. That means it'll give off heat. That produces hydrogen gas. And hydrogen gas can be fun to play with, but not when you aren't expecting it. So... Uh, I've seen people just shove a cork in that hole and pull it out when they're ready to drain their bucket. Myself, I don't really like going that route because the lye can wind up coming out pretty aggressively when you pull that cork. And it is absolutely not unheard of. For it to come out so aggressively that it actually splashes over the side of whatever you're catching it in and you get it on you. Now, this stuff isn't like straight up your skin's going to melt instantly caustic. But if you get it on you and you leave it on your skin long enough, you can get some minor to medium chemical burns. Um, it's no joke. It's definitely not a toy. But it's really hard to beat it for just getting stuff clean, especially greasy stuff. Uh, I like to use it to wash engine parts. <laughs> and I've made these before where I stuck a cheap ball valve in that hole. That works just what, that works really good too. On second thought, this is a better idea. It's used, it's old, it still works. I don't even remember where I got it. I had it laying around left over from another project. But most importantly, it threads, well, it'll cut its own threads into the plastic and a lot less horsing around and bullshit involved. And getting it in there so it seals because I really don't want to wind up going to all the trouble of doing this just to have my two gallons of good lie old-fashioned lie degreaser wind up all over the floor of my woodshed where it doesn't do me any goddamn good Alrighty, I've got our bucket hanging out upstairs 
in my bathroom just for a few minutes. I just want to make sure that uh, my threads bit good and tight on their way through the plastic and it's all sealed up. It should be fine though. So I figure it's a good time to tell you how I learned how to do this. Once we've got some limeade, if there's enough interest from this video, I'm seriously thinking about just saying to hell with it, pulling the trigger, and having a crack at making some old-fashioned lye soap. I mean, it's just some kind of fat, your lye, a little bit of heat, and if you want to, some essential oil or something for fragrance. So... What the hell? What's the worst that can happen? I make a mess that cleans things. Let's go see if that bucket's leaking. Let's see here. Hey, no water on the floor. Bottom of the bucket's dry. Sweet. Looks like we have a lie bucket, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. So the next thing that's going to happen is we got to go outside, which is going to suck because it's raining, because there's a few other simple little things that we need for this project, but they all funder, fall under the category of stuff that's just laying around. So I'm going to bundle up, figure out how I'm going to film that part and then go get some stuff out of the shed and uh, we're going to go play outside. Okay, so our bucket is ready to go. It's got a spigot in it. It holds water. Now we got to start building our filtration thing. So it's only two layers, not really a big deal. You start coarse, and then you want to end up fine before you put the ash on. So for our coarse, I got some little river rocks here that were picked over last summer. And I'm just going to put a couple shovelfuls in the bottom of my bucket, just until I cover the pipe that my spigot comes out of. And uh, then we'll go find something for the finer parts. Okay, through the magic of video editing, <laughs> we have teleported out to where we cut our wood and where we were running our wood chipper last year. Camera girl Cadence is precariously stump perched on top of a very slippery alder stump. I'm going to laugh if I fall and die. So, our next layer of fil filter media Ooh. is going to be this little pile of leftover shit from the wood chipper. That's leftover wood chips, guys. Wood chips, sticks, shreds. Hey, some of it's still dry. There. You see that, y'all? Some of that is still dry. I zoomed in. Okay. Zoom. <coughs> now, Friday. Katie and I had to trade headgear so that I could put my headlamp on and give her some light for the camera. But that's our filter media right here next to it. I got my bucket of ashes from the wood stove. So, now I'm going to very carefully, possibly while holding my breath. I feel like I'll hold my breath. I'm enjoying. Pour my ashes in. There we are. Oh. Some and of them is wet. Hey, they can't see no more. Okay, there we go. And I'm covered in them. Some of them is wet. You see, like, it's kind of moist. Now I'm going to take a chunk of wood, break up the chunks, make sure my surface is kind of level. Cigarette butt. You don't need that cigarette butt in there. There's also chunks of coal in there. Yeah, the charcoal won't hurt nothing, though. I mean, if they were great big chunks of charcoal worth saving for like a barbecue or something I'd sift it out but there's a bucket of water our wood stove actually bucket of water 
doesn't really leave much charcoal when it goes out. So, oh, whoa. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, All whoa. right. What I got here is about three quarters of a $30 Harbor Freight bucket. Wasn't actually a $30 bucket. They gave it to me free when I paid my dues. I'm going to carefully pour it over the top of all those ashes until it, splash it on me. stops soaking in. Now, yeah, it looks like cement. every way that I learned how to do this says you really do want to use rainwater. Uh, something. What? No. Oh. Caden says you need to hear the bubbles. Anyway, no, uh, you want to use rainwater or distilled water. Yeah, the my understanding of that is is you want your pH to be neutral. I don't think it's taking no more water. And we'll give it a minute. Yeah, the air bubbles. The, the air bubbles are just uh, the water bubbles. soaking into everything, working its way through. Bubbles. Bubbles. There, there's no weird chemistry happening yet. Bubbles. We're, we're only bubbling. So all of our air bubbles have stopped. We've got just a teeny little bit of water sitting on top of our lye. And now for the really easy part. Come on, Kate. Oh, okay. Bye, guys. Now for the easiest part of the equation. We just walk away. Leave it till sometime tomorrow. I'll come down, check on it, and uh, it might be ready to pull. It might take another day. We'll have to wait and see. personal opinion on this experiment is that it's going to be one of the funner ones that we do. Um, I also think that it's going to be something that me and dad can both like figure out and have fun doing and I really hope that I'm right in that. Sorry y'all had to grab the bucket of ash. Um, so yeah I really hope that that's Something that me and him both learned to enjoy. So, yeah. Okay. So, I just got a little jar here. And I'm going to open my valve. Oh, so far it's looking good. It's got a nice dark color to it. That's definitely what lye should look like. There we are. Don't drink it. You can go ahead and smell it. Doesn't really smell like anything though. But some people like smelling stuff. I'm gonna find a spot get set up so that you can see me doing the pH test. <clears throat> okay, so there's lots of traditional uh, kind of old wives tales ways to check your lie but some of them are actually kind of dangerous I mean I need to get this dang package open everything from uh, putting some on your tongue I'm not quite sure what you're looking for there um, <laughs> to floating eggs in it things like that now before I have done the egg thing, and I do know for a fact that if you have a strong enough mix, and a fresh egg will float. However, I'm kind of running low on eggs. And I don't really want to be wasting one. So, I'm just going to do it the modern, somewhat scientific way. I've got some universal indicator people paper here. I'm just going to do a quick litmus test. 
Uh, try to get one piece, not seven or eight. Here we are. Okay. This is really simple. I could screw around with the droppers and everything if I want to. But I'm just going to dip it in there. Hey, that looks good. And then I'm going to compare it to our colors up here. Yeah. I got a pH of about 13, not quite 14. Definitely basic or alkaline. Which lye should be. That's what makes it caustic. It's a strong alkaline. Only thing is, I forgot to Google what the pH should be. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay. Back from the dollar store. Got me some PPE if it fits. But. I gotta admit, that, that's the big challenge, being a big guy, is finding stuff that fits. Huh, you can't really inflate a rubber glove when you've got a big bushy beard. Okay. <laughs> now... Previously, when I've screwed with this stuff, it hasn't really affected my skin any. Just some mild irritation. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to drain off a little bit into these bottles. And then, I'll show you what all you can accomplish with it and it's actually probably gotten stronger since I uh, pulled that sample and tested it just because it's sat here soaking that much longer that's all we're doing just letting her drain Obviously, this is taking a minute because, you know, there's not really any pressure behind it. It's just gravity flowing down through my spigot. Uh, okay, there we are. We'll call that a full bottle. Nice, convenient household cleaner in a spray bottle. Okay, I'm going to fill the other one, and then I'm going to go find something greasy to clean, not to eat. Why do my fingers look like sausages? What? Because you're wearing gloves that are like at least two sizes too big for you. Not really, because I like to suck my fingers. <laughs> Phrasing! Okay, maybe I did actually have the timer set. See you It's crusty. Took the first layer right off, though. And... Is that... Just spray it. You can spray it on my gloves. Oh, yeah, you're wearing the... You're wearing the gloves. That's not some super aggressive scrubby deal either. That is just paper towel. I think actually that's probably the cheapest brand of paper towels that Walmart sells. So yeah, there you go. Homemade lie. Degreases crusty. Get it off. What? She's afraid of fluff. No, it's a spider web. A that spider is web. not a spider web. That is a. <sighs> Take it off. Take what up? Oh my god. 
wimp. All right. She's going to go at it with a burrow pad now. My fingers are stuck to the thing. Hold on, y'all. My fingers are starting to tingle. Okay. You should go wash your hands. No, I'll be fine. Me. Scrub at it a little. You can you are starting to tingle. You should go wash your hands if it's starting to tingle. No, I'll be fine. You're not really having to work at that either, are you? It says as his fingers are going to fall off. As you can see, clearly, it works almost, almost as good, possibly better, as actual store-bought easy off. I need the light. If I wanted to, I could take what's in that bottle and boil it down and make it even stronger. So, there's, that's something to keep in mind as well. Anyway, Katie and I are going to go finish our housework. And uh, we'll see you next time.